if you have been fetching data inside a use effect in react then you should definitely stop doing that and the reason is that you have five bugs hiding inside your code so in today's video i want to show you what these problems are and also how you can easily fix them so what we have here is a very simple application where we are loading some data from the backhand so here we just have a list of blog posts that we are loading from a backend that is running in the background. So if I call the backend endpoint directly from my browser, you can see that this is the response we get from a backend, a simple list of blog posts. And each blog post has a title, a description, and also a category. Now, the cool thing about this endpoint is that you can also filter the posts. And you do that by passing in a search parameter. So a category, for example, web development and then you get a response that includes only the blog post inside the given category and this is what we're using here you can easily filter by a category so if i select web development then they are filtered now if you take a look at the code here that i'm using to do this i'm actually fetching these posts inside a use effect so this is the easiest way to fetch data in react but it sadly has a lot of problems and i'm going to show you right away so here we just have our fetch function so we just create our URL and here we check if the selection is all, then we don't pass in any filter. And if another category is selected, then we pass it in the URL and then we make the request and then we parse it as a JSON. And then we can grab our value and we set the posts and this is a React state. This is then used inside the component to just go over the posts and render them. Now, the first problem that is hiding here in plain sight is a race condition. Now, let's take a look at this UI and let's select productivity. And you can see that the backend actually takes a while to answer. And when I select web development, this request is faster. And I've done this on purpose to make it easy to show this bug. And the reality is every request takes a different time. So there is a very common use case. But what we have here is that when you select productivity, it takes a while to load and then we can see the results. Now check out what happens if I select web development. It works. If I select productivity and then switch fast to web development. So in the time that the request is running in the background, we change to web development. The first request is still running. So when we get an answer from the backend, we then replace the state, which means that we have a wrong state here so this is what it actually looks like you select the first category and you make a request and it, while it's still running in the meanwhile you change the category so you make a different request so when the second request is done we actually set the state over here and the other request is still running in the background so when we get an answer we set the data here and this is obviously wrong because in this case we should not pay attention to this first request at all. So we can actually fix this really easy by taking advantage of use effects cleanup function. And the way to do that is to just create a variable and call it is active. And I'm going to set this originally to be true. Let's make this a real variable and not a constant. And then we're going to add a cleanup function. And this is going to be run after every effect. And here we're going to set is active to false. And then here in the callback, we can check if is active and then we're going to set the posts. Now let's go back to the application and see if this fixes the problem. So let's select productivity. Takes a while to load. Web development loads directly. Now let's change to productivity and then web development. As you can see, the first request is not overriding the second one. Great. So we have fixed our first problem, which was race conditions. Now, the second problem happening here is that we are making each API call twice to the backend. Now let's open the inspector and open the network tab and let's reload the page and see what's happening. And as you can see, we're making this post request twice to the backend. And the reason behind that is React's strict mode. Use effects are always run twice during development in React, which makes it, of course, really tricky to work with. The third problem that is happening here is that we don't have any loading or error states to show to the user. 
So when you first load the page, you just have an empty screen. And when you select a different category, it just takes a while to show up. And it's not clear that it's actually loading in the background. So an easy way to fix that problem would be to add another state. So let's add a state for loading. And it's going to have an initial value of true. And let's call this is loading. And have a set loading function. And then we can add the same thing for error. And for error, we're going to have an initial value of false. Set is error. And is error. So now we need to come back to our used effect and let's wrap everything inside a try catch and then we can set is error to true. And of course we need to also set loading to true and then false. So in the beginning of this fetch function, we can add set is loading to true set is error to false. And here we of course need to set is loading to false. And then we can go down and add some loading and error states. So is error. If that's the case, then we're going to show a message error loading. Otherwise, if is loading, we can have some loading elements. And otherwise, we're going to show our blog posts. So when it's loading, we can just show some skeleton uh, elements. All right, now let's reload the page. And we are not seeing any loading state. But if I select another category, you can see that it's loading in the meanwhile. And you can see it with this productivity filter. But if you select all, it just happens so fast that you actually don't see it. Now, the third problem here is that we're actually not handling the server response correctly. And we have two problems there. The first one is that we're not checking what kind of response the server actually sent. Although we already have a try catch block in our fetch function, we're only checking for errors in the network. So if the backend answers with a 404 or a 500 error code, we're actually not handling that. One way to handle that is by checking if the response is okay and then setting the post. Otherwise, we can throw an error locally here. Another thing that we're also not handling is that we are not type checking the response that we're getting from the backend. Here we have this response.json, which just tries to parse the response, and this is typed as any. So we're actually not 100% sure that the backend answered with data that does make sense. Maybe we have a different content inside the response body. So here we should type check this and we can use a validation library for that like Zot or archetype. I've actually made separate videos about both of them. You can go check it out if that's interesting for you. Now, if you've been writing some front end code for a while now, you for sure have heard of the mantra, make invalid states unrepresentable. And what that means is that you have to make it impossible to represent an invalid state. And this is actually not the case here. So if you think about it, we have three different states and they're all related to fetching the data from the backend. But the reality or what we actually would like to have here is a state that looks something like this. So we are either fetching the data, which means that we have a status of loading or there is an error while fetching the data, or we have a success state and then we have the data. And in this case, we don't have any error. And here we have so many combinations that are possible that do not make sense, like having is loading set to true and error as well, and maybe not any post or any other combination that really does not make sense, which means that we can never 100% rely on these states to make sure that the posts are loaded or not. Now, it seems like this code just got out of control. It's just so much boilerplate to create a very simple web page and just to load the data from one endpoint. Now, imagine loading data from two endpoints or trying to combine them in a meaningful way. That's going to introduce way more edge cases. Now, if there's one solution that fixes all these problems, it's using React Query. It takes care of all of these problems and way more. 
also takes care of sharing data between multiple components it also has caching built in and so much other features so really recommend using it and the cool thing about it is that the syntax is really simple and it does not take that many lines of code i hope you found this video interesting thanks for watching and see you in the next video